morning, wherever you are, if it's in the east, west, north, or south. Good evening. You're tuning in live with Mamlaka Broadcast Network, MBN. And it's a delightful pleasure to have you. You know, we've been talking about springtime. We've done springtime one, springtime two, springtime part three now. In springtime part one, we talked about new beginnings and new seasons. And in part two, we talked about where are you planted? And now for part three, we're going to talk about blooming and growing. Bloom and grow wherever you are planted. I, I sometimes think back about when I began my journey. And when I began to basically seek the Lord. And I had to change some things. I had to move in a new direction. I even had to drop some friends. And that is what we have to do. I'll tell you what blooming means. A person who is blooming, you, know, you ever see somebody who's blooming? Like see a pregnant woman, you say, oh my God, you, you're blooming. And that's what blooming is. You always look excited. You're growing, you're mushrooming into that individual that you're created to be. You're somebody who has a special gift that was innate and it's innate in you. So when we're talking about bloom and grow, we're talking about in spite of the circumstances, instead of the challenges, instead of the crisis that you're facing, what about where and how and the direction that you're called to go in? What about that? Are you rooted and grounded? And if you are rooted and grounded, what are you rooted and grounded in? I want to take a moment now and thank you. Good morning, Victoria. Thank you for tuning in. I have a few friends that told me they were going to tune in, and I'm hoping Christine is there. I'm hoping Jewel is there. So good morning and welcome to MBN Broadcast for your morning plug-in. Have you had your coffee yet? If you haven't had your coffee yet, this is a great time to start. So we're talking about bloom and grow where you are. When you are talking about grooming and growing where you are, it's about embracing the challenges. It's about understanding why you where you are. If you're hitting a roadblock right now, examine yourself. Say to yourself, am I hitting this roadblock because I'm literally not doing, or I'm in the wrong place, or am I in the wrong location? As we compare the plant, do you realize there are some plants? I was talking to my sister the other day. She has become the consummate uh, gardener or agriculturist. And she said to me, you know, right now there's the full moon or the new moon. She said, you can now plant anything that grows under the ground. And I was like, under the ground? She says, yes. Like if beets or if uh, anything that grows under the ground, you want to begin to plant those things because the season is right. And that is what it is in our walk with Christ. Where are we in our season with Christ? Have we been rooted and grounded and are we nourishing our cells by embracing his word are we taking the time out to read the word because if you are planted for instance if you plant you notice a aloe aloe tree you can plant an aloe tree almost anywhere a cactus tree definitely in the desert and because of it's innate ability is able to survive and withstand. In our work with Christ, if we are not rooted and grounded in his word, and if we're not surrounding ourselves with persons of like minds, 
of persons who are moving in the same direction, you know what happens? We would begin to lose our way. In the Bible, it asks us, can the blind lead the blind? I'm asking you that. Do you, have you ever seen a blind person lead a blind person? For the most part, a blind person that leads a blind person, he would either fall in a ditch, he would have accidents, and he would never find his way around. So when you see a blind person, normally you would see them holding the hand of their, their child or their spouse or significant other because they need that help. And when you have given your life to Christ, you must continue being nourished. You must continue to add to that soil. You know, when you're planting a plant, I, I noticed there's, a, there's an ingredient called miracle growth. And this miracle growth is supposed to help these plants. I don't know exactly what's in it, but it's you're advised to add this potting soil and all these things, because what it does is it assists in the nutrients of the plant. So imagine you're giving your life to Christ and all of a sudden you're hanging in the same circle, you're moving in the same direction. And one of the things I always remember my mom always said to me, or I remember Pastor Mal saying this to you, can you, if you're in a crowd and you're the smartest person in the crowd, you know what? You need to find a new crowd. You know why? Because there is nothing that that person can teach you. And what they're doing is they're just gleaning on you, gleaning from you, taking from you, and there's nothing being added to you. So we must recognize the importance of moving in the direction and doing the things that we have to do in order to move and be more Christ-like. I'll share a story with you. My daughter had a birthday just recently. But I remember when she was two years old, we were walking in the food store and we know we have to train kids. The Bible tells us to train up a kid in the way they ought to go. And when they become old, they will not depart from it. You could correct a child at a young age, but the most important thing you must remember is it's a continuation. You have to constantly correct, you must guide, and you must give proper and concise information. We were in the food store and she began to play a game with me. She would be hiding, hide and seek. She says, mommy, mommy, where is you? And I, it was a loud silence in the place. And I was kind of a little embarrassed, right? Because I, was like, oh, I knew I taught her better than that. And so when she came to me, I said, you know, it's not mommy, where is you? It's mommy, where are you? So she ran around again. And she shouted out again, Mommy, Mommy, where is you are? And there was an eruption of um, giggling all over the store. And when she came to me, I corrected her again. But you know, today she's 35 years of age. And for the most part, if she's watching this right now, I'm guaranteeing you, she's going to tell me about the floor. She's going to tell me about my word endings. She's going to tell me whether I said something correctly or what have you. But I said that to say this. We must grow where we're planted. But we must re remember that in growing where we're planted, we must be nourished. We must take the time to listen. We must hear. And we must apply. And we must apply with the intention of doing. Faith is no, it's no good without action. So we must always remember when the crisis hit, when the storm cloud rise, and if we're planted and we're rooted and we're grounded in the right words, in the right way of doing things, we will not falter. Remember now, you must break up the fallow ground. That was one of the things we talked about. In breaking up the fallow ground and, and, and cleansing and removing the debris and all of that, you're going to now see clearer. Your plant is going to be able to mushroom to the plant and to the point that it needs. You're going to reap fruit. You're going to reap seed. From the seed, you're going to reap seeds and more seeds because now you're going to replant those seeds. And that's how we become 
fisher of men. That's how we become people of kingdom mindset. That's when we now are positioned in a way where we can tell others about Christ. It's through our lifestyle. It's through our lifetime. What we do, we are then positioned to tell people who our God is. So until next time, thank you for tuning in to MBN Mamlaka Broadcast Network. Don't forget to share, share, share. We're plugged in and tune in every morning for a podcast like this. Thank you once again, and may God bless you, and may, he, may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Peace unto you, everyone. Good morning.